Now, I've tried this one myself, too. Pinch your elbow as hard as you can. You barely feel pain. How come? Well, different areas of your skin have different nerve endings. Our bodies are designed to be more sensitive to pain in places that are at higher risk of getting damaged. Those important parts have more nerve endings so that we're more alert and able to protect ourselves. And thick skin, like that on elbows, has fewer pain detectors. Now, I'm not talking about the tingling, jolting pain you can feel when you hit your elbow against something. Oh, that feels almost like your entire arm has been electrocuted. It's not a feeling I would consider funny, but it comes from the funny bone. Now, the funny bone isn't actually a bone. It's a nerve that starts in your spine, goes through your neck, through your elbow, and through your fingers. Its real name is the ulnar nerve. It's one of the three primary nerves in your arm, and it provides sensation to the fingertips. Your ulnar nerve is well protected by muscle, fat, and bone. But there's one spot at your elbow where this nerve is exposed, and that spot is, yeah, the funny bone. A different but real version of Achilles' story, huh? Okay, so now you know why it hits so different when you bump your funny bone, and why you feel nothing when you pinch your elbow. Now, the next phenomenon is related to socially awkward moments. Okay, maybe not entirely. It might happen when your crush gives you a compliment. I'm talking about blushing. Now, I'm not sure those butterflies in your stomach exist when you're in love. But I'm sure of this. When you blush, your stomach lining also turns red. Yeah, I've looked. The stomach lining is the tissue that protects your stomach walls from the acid inside. When you blush, it also turns red because blushing happens when the blood rises to the surface of the skin. This affects the stomach, too. Now, this is a natural process, a physiological response to the change in your emotions. Now, since we're talking about the stomach, it might be a good time to mention that the stomach fluid has the ability to melt a steel table. Yep. This means the acid would be able to digest your internal organs. Luckily, the stomach lining prevents this from happening. Number three is about letting you know that you can glow in the dark. Now, don't turn off the lights just yet. You can't see it with the unaided eye. These visuals of glittering human bodies come from ultra-sensitive cameras. Japanese scientists were the first to capture the images of human bioluminescence. Only ultra-sensitive cameras can reveal that our bodies emit tiny amounts of light because this light is a thousand times weaker than the human eye can detect. Apparently, all living creatures produce a small amount of light thanks to the chemical reactions in their cells. Humans are newly added to this list. The researchers have been photographing the upper bodies of the volunteers for several days. The results show that the amount of emitted light followed a 24-hour cycle. The glow is at its highest in late afternoon and lowest late at night. Plus, the brightest light is emitted from the cheeks, forehead, and neck. Interestingly, this does not correspond with the brightest areas caught by thermal cameras. Did you know you're a little bit taller in the morning than you are later at night? Yes, I've been measuring you. <laughs> Seriously, this high difference is related to gravity. Its force compresses the cartilage in your spine and knees when you stand up or sit down throughout the day. But when you're lying down, your spine decompresses and relaxes. That's why when you wake up in the morning after resting in bed all night, you're taller. The increase in height is not even above an inch, so don't bet on who is taller after hearing this information. Fun fact, astronauts returning from a mission are a few inches taller than they usually are on Earth. It's because of the lack of gravity on the International Space Station. They don't remain that tall forever, though. When they're on the Earth again, gravity gradually squeezes them back down to their usual height. Now, let's get back to the organ we've already spoken about, the skin. Yes, the skin is an organ. In fact, it's the largest organ in your body. It contributes to about 15% of your body weight. What else does this organ do besides covering your body? It performs vital functions. For instance, it protects your body from external physical and biological harm. Plus, it prevents excessive water loss. Now, I can't help wondering what other surprises the human body has in store for us. But right now, let's move on to the animal planet. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have something called eye tubes. Their rod-shaped eyes do not move in their sockets as our eyeballs do. That's why owls would have to move their entire bodies to look around. But moving their torsos would make some noise and other animals would hear it. So owls have evolved to have necks that can twist around 270 degrees and they move super silently. But why the concern? Well, night vision requires large corneas to get as much light as possible. This is the main reason why most nocturnal animals, such as the slow loris or tarsier, have big eyes. For owls, it works a little differently. Since they have small heads, such large eyes wouldn't be able to fit inside. Now, even though these creatures don't have eyeballs, they have three sets of eyelids. One set is for blinking, one is for sleeping, and the last one is for keeping their eye tubes clean. So, do the owls give a hoot about that? Yes, yes they do. Moving on from nocturnal animals to the ones you're more familiar with, meow. Cats have an extra organ that allows them to taste scents in the air. This organ is called Jacobson's organ, or the vomeral nasal organ. Jacobson's organ is located inside the cat's nasal cavity and opens into the roof of the mouth. This organ can detect specific chemicals by using nerves that lead directly to the brain. That's not a regular sniffing, though. The odor receptors of Jacobson's organ aren't designed to catch ordinary smells. They detect chemicals that have no odor at all. In other words, cats can detect undetectable smells. It's not just this. Jacobson's organ increases the sense of smell. For instance, when kittens need to find their mother's milk, imagine there are two mother cats and four kittens. Kittens can distinguish their mother from the other grown-up cat with the help of their sense of smell. Now, when two people meet, they assess each other's body language. Cats can usually do this by sniffing each other's heads. This greeting releases pheromones that can tell a lot about one cat to the other, like what the other feline likes to eat or if they are healthy or not. They can even evaluate whether the other cat is happy or moody, all thanks to Jacobson's organ. Now, another fact about cats. Their nose has distinct ridges that look like a pattern. Similar to our fingerprints, every cat has a unique nose print. It can be used as a form of identification. Okay, cat, we can nail you for breaking the vase. We have your nose prints all over it. Now, you want to cut a deal? Just tell us what you know about the dog and that chewed-up DVD.
Dog lovers, no, I didn't forget about you. Here's a myth you've probably heard. Dogs are colorblind, but they aren't. However, it is true that the color range they can detect is limited compared to the spectrum humans can see. Their color palette consists mostly of yellows, blues, and violets. Our reds, greens, and oranges are not noticeable to them. Now, this one is about turtles. These animals cannot leave their shells and get back whenever they want. In fact, they are completely attached to their shells. These shells grow with turtles, similar to the human skin. A turtle shell consists of 50 bones. It also includes a skeleton with the spine and rib cage. So, they go on vacation with it. It's kind of like an RV that you can't get rid of. You have as much hair as a monkey. <laughs> now, I don't mean to be insulting, but your fingerprints are not unique. You can hear better after you cover your ears. Now, can these statements be true, or are they nothing but myths? When a person is lying, their own nose can give them away. Can it be true? Yep. Researchers from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon got named the Pinocchio effect. Hey, how about this one? People can have as many hairs on their body as chimpanzees. Can you believe this? Surprisingly, this one's true too. The hair count of a person in a chimp or any other ape of our size is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is quite fine and often colorless. This makes it hard to see the sheer number of hairs. Your lungs are identical. It sounds reasonable, but is it true? Well, it's nothing but a myth. Your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller. It has to, to make room for your heart. By the way, your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, tiny balloon-shaped air sacs, in your lungs. I bet you've heard this one before. Carrots can make your eyesight better. True or myth? Unfortunately, this idea isn't true. Neither can carrots get you better nighttime vision. Carrots are indeed packed with vitamin A. It benefits your body and protects your eyes. But even these veggies can't save you from wearing glasses if you need them. Some people sneeze when looking at the sun. Now, do they? Yes, that's true. About 25% of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon even has its own name. The photic sneeze reflex. Ooh. Shaving body hair makes it grow darker and thicker. Is it the truth? Don't worry, that's just a myth. It might look as if your body hair has changed in thickness, rate of growth, or even color after getting shaved. But it's just an illusion. Shaving makes the tips of hair follicles blunt. That's why they look rougher and darker than usual. But once your hair grows in again, it'll start to look the same as it did before you shaved it. You have unique fingerprints. Ah, this one must be true, right? The problem with this statement is that scientists can't prove that each set of fingerprints is absolutely unique. It does seem to people, but it's impossible to check. And while this is improbable, people with identical fingerprints can actually turn out to be real. People have more than five senses. Is it an appealing myth or reality? There are five most obvious senses. Vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But how about thermoception, the sense of heat, nociception, the perception of pain, or the perception of your body awareness, proprioception, close your eyes and touch your nose, got it? That's proprioception and action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. Your fingers actually get pruning after you spend too much time in the water for your safety. Is it true? What's your bet? Scientists believe so, but first things first, pruning fingers are caused by narrowing blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area, and this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists aren't 100% sure, but they think this process occurs to help you have a better grip when your hands and feet are wet. People only use 10% of their brains. Oh, how I wish it was just a myth. And it is. Apparently, you use almost 100% of your brain every day. This organ is active all the time, even when you're asleep. When you're snoozing, your frontal cortex, which is responsible for higher level thinking, and the areas that help you sense your surrounding, are still doing their job. For some people, the world is much brighter than for others. Hmm, how come? That's actually true. There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around one million different shades. But those with technochromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare, and women have it more often than men. But do you know the funniest thing about this? Most people with technochromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Sometimes you can hear better after closing your ears. Well, it seems counterproductive, but can it be true? Indeed, if you're in a loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, you should close your ears to hear your friends better. 
push the tragus, which is the pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of your ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. Voila! You can prevent yourself from sneezing. Oh, that would be very convenient. But maybe it's just a myth. It's true. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. It immediately puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. Okay, you're going to finish these five episodes of your favorite series now and catch up on sleep later. But can you? Unfortunately, no. You can try to catch up on sleep at the weekend or take lots of afternoon naps during the week. But it won't help. Your body doesn't work this way. If you didn't have enough sleep the night before or went to bed really late, sleeping until noon won't save the day. Even worse, too much sleep will make you feel groggy. Some people have more ribs than others. Is it a myth? Nah, it's true. Most people have 12 pairs of ribs, which makes 24 in total. But 1 in 200 people has an additional 25th rib. It's called cervical and forms at the base of the neck above the collarbone. It can grow on the left, right, or even both sides of the body. Those people who have extra ribs most likely know nothing about this modification. That's because an extra rib rarely forms completely and can look like a thin strand of tissue. In this case, you won't see it even on an x-ray. You should wait for at least a half an hour after eating before you go swimming. Well, it sounds reasonable, but is it true? Ah, that's just a myth. The general idea behind this claim is that eating a large meal makes your blood flow toward your stomach to help with the digestion process. At the same time, your muscles don't get enough blood, which leads to cramps. But in reality, swimming right after having eaten something isn't dangerous at all. Your blood doesn't get diverted enough for it to cause any serious problems. Some people's snores can get louder than a working kitchen appliance. What do you think about this? Well, on average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels, which is as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels, and that's as loud as a working food blender. Not all people have round pupils. Can it be true? Yup. Two people out of every 10,000 have an unusually shaped pupil. Most commonly, it resembles a keyhole. This eye disorder is called coloboma. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. Hey, can you speak up? I just ate an entire pizza. That's because after eating a hearty meal, our hearing tends to be a bit less sharp. During digestion, most of our bloodstream is directed toward the stomach, which takes away a bit from all the other organs. So, next time you want to go listen to your favorite band at a live concert, make sure to eat a lighter meal to keep your ears pit perfect. On top of our stomach and left kidney, we have a magical organ that can grow back if we remove a part of it. Our liver can regenerate itself by making new cells called heptocytes. They begin to multiply once the liver is damaged. The seriousness of that damage defines if it can regenerate completely and the amount of time it takes to do so. Ever wondered what's worse for your body? No sleep or no food? Turns out the lack of sleep is more dangerous. That's because if you don't rest, your body becomes exposed to a lot more risks. After 24 hours without any shut-eye, you can start to have memory problems and find it difficult to concentrate. At just 17 hours without sleep, you start to feel tired and groggy, irritable, tense, and more emotional. I need a nap. Your pain receptors also become more sensitive, which means everything hurts a bit more than it should. Oh, and it also affects your hearing, too. What? On the other hand, you can be well into your 24-hour period with no food before your body realizes you've stopped eating. In the first 8 hours, you just keep digesting the last meals you had. After those first hours, you start to use stored fats for energy. Not eating for more than 24 hours means that your body will start eating away at its own protein, which means you literally start to lose muscle. Rainwater isn't always safe to drink. It can sometimes hold harmful bacteria and viruses. Also, in heavily polluted locations, it may even meet other harmful materials. Some communities out there do depend solely on rainwater as their primary source of hydration. But does rainwater have any other health benefits? Not really, according to current studies. Some of those risky substances may be removed from rainwater if you boil it. But it's best to stick to the safer side and only drink water from sources that are 100% safe for human consumption. Now, we produce sweat mostly to regulate our body temperature and for some added moisture, like the one we need in the palms of our hands for a better grip. But sweat doesn't just show up on our skin. It comes out of around 5 million pores on our bodies. We're literally stepping on a quarter of our bones each day. We have just over 200 bones in our body, but about a quarter of those are in a very small surprising area, our feet. Since we have 26 bones in each foot, we end up with literally 52 in both. Now, our eyes produce tears for many reasons, like protecting themselves from infection or clearing up debris, such as smoke and dust, or when your baby done your own. But the number of tears we produce is quite surprising, up to 30 gallons per year. That's almost enough to fill a bathtub. Wow, that is heartbreaking. Our blood pressure wakes up hours before we do. That's because in the morning, the body produces a bunch of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. They help give us the energy boost we need during our morning hours, but they also increase our blood pressure, which is usually higher between 6 a.m. and noon. During the night, since we should technically sleep and perform no physical activity, our blood pressure drops down by up to 20%. Speaking of our vital fluid, our blood accounts for about 10% of our total body weight. 
We tend to think of our body weight as being mostly made up of muscles, fat stores, and bones. But there's a lot more to it. In a fit adult person, bones make up 15% of the total body weight. About 40 to 45% is left to muscles, about 15% to fat deposits, and the rest are stuff like skin, tendons, hair, and other yucky things. Let's see. That adds up to, yep, 100%. Your lungs aren't twins, they're siblings. That's because they aren't the same size or shape. Your right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and your heart is to blame for it since your ticker tilts to the left a little bit. This creates a small indentation in the left lung called the cardiac impression, which is also what funny heart doctors do at comedy clubs. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Doesn't your house have a liver room? Many of your body measurements are quite symmetrical in surprising ways. If you were to stretch out both of your arms, your wingspan, and measure it, it should show how tall you are. Based on these similar measurements, specialists can even produce theories about what ancient humans used to look like. Looks like we've evolved to be increasingly symmetrical to appear more attractive and healthier to attract mates. Hmm. More so, since we've evolved to also walk on two legs, our symmetrical features help us to move around with the least amount of energy because it creates balance. Now, humans aren't natural champions when it comes to the scent of smell, that's for sure. But our noses can pick up about one trillion different scents. Scientists are still performing research on this subject and believe the number may be even higher. Some dog breeds may be able to notice scents somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we do, but turns out the best nose in the animal kingdom may be attributed to the elephant because of its staggering number and type of olfactory receptor genes, over 10,000, while humans and chimpanzees have less than 400. We tend to look at our pinkies as our most delicate fingers, but we do have more power in them than we think. Turns out that should our pinky finger be lost or affected, the overall strength of our grip may decrease by up to 33%. The liquid in our stomach, made of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride, is way more powerful than any acidic food you can think of, like lemons, pineapples, or tomatoes. The pH of healthy stomach acid should be between 1 and 3, so if you think about it, it's just below that of battery acid. Our hair strands are strong too, so strong that research is performed on them to duplicate their resistance into human-made materials. A healthy head of hair should be able to withstand up to 26,000 pounds. It's due to a little protein in the hair strand called keratin, which you can also find in your nails and skin. Now, only about one-third of us humans have perfect vision. There are a lot more glasses and contacts out there than you'd think, making up about 66%. Apart from different eye conditions, our vision also gets worse with age. When we're born, our heads amount to one quarter of our total length. By the time we reach 25, our head will only be one-eighth of it. That's because our heads won't change their size a lot as we grow older, as opposed to the rest of our body, mostly when it comes to the legs and torso. Our brains are these super-powerful computers, and a single human brain cell can hold five times as much information as the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Maybe you remember that. We've yet to pinpoint the exact amount of data it can support, but in electronic terms, the storage capacity of the brain is around 2,500 terabytes. For comparison, the National Archives of Britain, which keeps over 900 years of history, only takes up 70 terabytes. That's probably the reason our brains need the most amount of oxygen compared to other organs. About 20% of the total oxygen that enters the bloodstream, and that's despite the fact that it makes up only 2% of our body mass. Our normal activities, plus the effect of gravity, make the cartilage in our ankles, knees, hips, back, and neck slowly compress. Once you rest overnight, the cartilage goes back to normal. On average, you are somewhere around 0.4 inches taller in the morning than you are later at night. And that's why they call me Stretch.